Naruto, 10 Deaths That Could Have Been Avoided While the world of Naruto is often proven to be a dangerous place to live, these 10 characters definitely didn't have to die. The Naruto series often demonstrates that the ninja world is a dangerous place to live. With enemies lurking outside their village, young shinobi must train to learn how to fight against opposing forces. While their time at the academy helps them develop their skills. Nothing prepares them more than actual battles and missions. Sometimes a simple mission turns into a life or death situation. Even with training and powerful allies, when facing a powerful opponent. Some shinobi have to put their lives on the line. It's sad having to say goodbye to so many wonderful characters, especially when many of their deaths could have been avoided. 10. Niji didn't have to use his body as a human shield. Niji Hyuga, Hinata Hyuga's cousin, is a very skilled Byakugan user. Although Niji is a member of a branch family of the Hyuga clan, he overcomes his animosity towards the main family and forges his own path. Sadly, Niji is killed during the Fourth Great Shinobi War and the Ten Tails fires would release projectiles at him. Niji didn't necessarily have to die, but he used his body as a human shield to protect Hinata and Naruto, who were right in the line of fire. 9. Itachi wouldn't have been a target if he didn't murder his clan. Itachi Uchiha is one of the last surviving members of the Uchiha clan. He is responsible for killing his entire clan in what became known as the Uchiha clan massacre. An event that made him a target of the Leaf Village, and his younger brother Sasuke. Perhaps if Itachi hadn't carried out the massacre and just let the Uchiha have their uprising, he wouldn't have become a target for his brother. Sasuke went to great lengths to kill his brother over that one incident, which all could have been avoided. 8. Jiraiya didn't have to take on the six paths of pain alone. Jiraiya is one of the legendary Sanin and Naruto's mentor throughout the series. Even though he's a very powerful and skilled shinobi. He was taken out by the six paths of pain. His death made a significant impact on the rest of the series. Jiraiya was investigating pain in the hidden rain village and he met his ultimate demise. In part because he was traveling alone. Taking on six very powerful beings that he didn't know much about wasn't a wise choice, and even Tsunade knew she would never see Jiraiya again if he journeyed on his own. 7. Chio didn't have to give up her life energy. Granny Chio is an elder of the Sand Village and a talented puppet master. Although she had recused herself from involvement in shinobi affairs, she joined Naruto and his friends on their mission to retrieve Gara. The mission is successful in that they retrieve Gara's body, but he's already dead by the time they find him. Chio feels responsible for his death and decides to give her life energy to revive him. Obviously, had she not done this, she would still be alive. 6. Shursui Uchiha didn't have to jump off a bridge. Shursui Uchiha is another famous and powerful member of the nearly extinct clan. Like Itachi, Shursui didn't agree with growing unrest in the Uchiha clan or the plan to overthrow the Kanoha leadership. Shursui tried to use his Mangekyo Sharingan's Koto Amatsukami to force the Uchiha to negotiate with the elders. However, Danzo stole his right eye, and fearing he would also come for his left. Shursui gave it to Itachi before ending his own life. He really didn't have to jump off a bridge, and even worse, his death just caused more trouble for Itachi. 5. Yashimaru didn't have to attack Gara. Yashimaru isn't a major character in the Naruto series, but he definitely has an impact on Gara's life. As Gara's uncle and caretaker, he tried to understand his nephew rather than treating him as something to be feared because of his Jinchuriki abilities. Because Gara is unable to control Shikaku, the fourth Kazakage, who also happens to be Gara's father, sends Yashimaru to test him. 
The test turns deadly when Yashimaru is fatally wounded and decides to blow himself up in an attempt to kill Gara as well. It's hard to imagine why Yashimaru went through with the mission if he really cared for Gara. If he'd said no to the Kazakage, he would still be alive. 4. Shikaka Nara and Inoichi Yamanaka didn't have to stay at headquarters. Shikaku and Inoichi, among others, are stationed at headquarters during the Fourth Great Shinobi War. The two shinobi are tasked with sending information to and receiving intel from the battlefield in order to help the ground shinobi develop fighting strategies. When the Ten Tails targets them, the people of headquarters, including Shikaku and Inoichi, stay behind to relay one final battle strategy to the allied shinobi forces. Their actions are heroic, but even so, they could have tried to flee headquarters or had Mabui. The Rakage's assistant, transport them all away. 3. Rin Noera didn't have to jump in front of Kakashi's Chidori. Rin Noera was a member of Team Minato with Kakashi and Abito. Rin was later kidnapped by Madara Achiha and the Three Tails. Isabu was sealed inside her against her will. The young Chunin soon realizes that the enemy wants to use her to attack the Leaf Village. Rin asks Kakashi to kill her to protect the Leaf Village. But he refuses, so she takes matters into her own hands, jumping in front of Kakashi's Chidori as he's aiming it at someone else to end her own life. Rin was probably right in her assumption about being part of a plan to attack the village. But she didn't have to die. She could have avoided the village and possibly learned how to control her new power. 2. Hiruzen Sarutobi didn't have to use the dead demon consuming seal. When Orochimaru attacks the leaf village in an attack known as the Kanoha Crush, he targets his former sensei. The third Hokage, Hiruzen Sarutobi. As a way to punish his former master, he summons the first and second Hokage to fight him. Hiruzen is sealed off from his bodyguards as he battles for his life. Although outnumbered, he holds his own against the two former Hokage. He's injured during the fight, but what ultimately seals his fate is his use of the dead demon consuming seal to defeat his enemies. He didn't have to use the deathly seal. He might have died anyway, but the use of the seal definitively doomed him. 1. Toby didn't have to kill Conan. Conan is one of the founding members of the Akatsuki, an organization that originally stood for peace. After Nagato's death, Conan returns to the Hidden Rain Village. Renouncing her ties with the organization and putting her hope in Naruto for a better future. Toby wants to find Nagato's body so he can take his Rinnegan, and Conan is the only person who knows where the body lies. Conan confronts Toby when he enters the Hidden Rain Village and a fight ensues. Toby eventually uses a Genjutsu on Conan to get the information he needs, telling her she will die when the illusion is over. He could have just used Genjutsu on her from the beginning and avoided killing her, after all, they served in the Akatsuki together. <laughs>